Do you ever get upset because your video quality after you shoot a video underwater is out of focus, kind of shaky, kind of hard to see, just like this? Well, say hello to my little friend. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 with a three axis gimbal. And on today's episode, we are going to put it in its underwater housing and test it out. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. So sometimes it can be really irritating when you're trying to get good footage and afterwards you look at it and it's all shaky and things aren't in focus and it really isn't concentrated on what you were trying to capture the footage of. How do we go about correcting that? Well, number one, become a better diver. Buoyancy control, your position in the water, uh, those are all prime things. And previously we've talked about that in terms of becoming an underwater photographer. You need to be a good diver first before you put that camera in your hands. Second, nowadays some cameras will have some great software that will help to stabilize the video as you're shooting it. I know the DJI Osmo Action and now some of the GoPros have that type of software. And lastly, how about a three axis mechanical gimbal? Take a look at how I move the gimbal from side to side or rotate it. No matter what position I hold it in, it constantly makes sure that the lens is pointing directly at the thing you're trying to focus on. How useful could that be underwater? So I've been using this DJI Osmo Pocket 2 for a variety of reasons. I've been shooting interviews because it has wireless microphone capabilities for B-roll footage, but I've never used it underwater yet. And so in this episode, we are going to test out the DJI underwater housing for the Pocket 2. In this episode, I'm not going to go into great detail about the camera itself. There are several other channels out there that have produced wondrous videos all about the Osmo Pocket 2. It's how I educated myself about the camera and, and all of its features. I'm going to drop those links down below so you can go check out those channels. But what we are going to do in today's show is we're going to review the underwater housing and the Osmo Action 2. And you're actually going to get to see it in action. We're going to take it diving. Unlike other channels that review gear and we never see it underwater, you're going to see this in action underwater. And we're filming this segment after we've actually tested this system out underwater. And something happens during a dive that makes me very sad. If you want to see Lyle cry, uh, stick around for that. But before we actually take this underwater, there's a few things to know how to set up the camera, get it ready to go into the case, and how to actually insert it and make sure it's secure inside of the case. So let's do that. So as a YouTube creator, I get tired of carrying around a lot of camera equipment from location to location. This gives me almost everything I need to be able to shoot on location. So you can purchase the DJI Pocket all by itself. However, if you're a creator, I would definitely look at the DJI creator package that they have on offer. In addition to the camera, you'll receive a multiple other little components. It adds maybe about $100 to the whole purchase, but if you were to buy each of these pieces individually, it would cost you more than $100. We don't use any of this stuff other than the camera underwater, so let's take a look at the underwater housing. So this is the Osmo Pocket waterproof case uh, that the camera will fit inside has a large front lens that the camera will look out of. Obviously it has a larger lens because that gimbal will be able to move. It is limited to some degree though, uh, once we've got it set up to put in there. This is rated to 60 meters or over 180 feet, which as recreational divers we should probably never get to. When we look inside of here, it unscrews and you remove the entire front portion of the housing. Inside of here, there is a single O-ring, and I have to say I'm a little concerned about this design uh, because uh, typically you're going to see those O-rings on the outer edges, and if I have more than one O-ring, I'm going to feel even better about it. But to have a single O-ring here as we descend in the water column, I'm concerned that this is going to compress and will it allow this ring to loosen over time. I guess we'll find out. Then also it comes with desiccant material that you'll slide down beside the camera because otherwise uh, you're gonna get a little bit of condensation in there during a dive, particularly if it's uh, warm up on the surface and then it gets colder, then it would allow that lens to fog. You wouldn't get good images. So now we have the Osmo Pocket all ready to go into the case itself. We've set up the software to let it know what's going to be in the case so it can put the gimbal at the correct position. One more thing we need to do to prepare the camera. There is a little joystick and button right here we don't need to have that on there. In fact, it won't fit in the case. So this actually pushes out. We're gonna remove that front lens. On top here, we have the clip. 
that simply pulls out. That's gonna help secure the camera once it's slid down in there. We have a little window on the outside. That's how we're going to see the viewfinder on the camera. We wanna make sure that the two are oriented correctly. So when we insert the camera, we wanna make sure that the viewfinder comes through the little window so we'll be able to see what we're looking at in there. And then lastly, we have this little piece of desiccant and that's just simply going to slide down beside the camera. We're gonna put our clip back on just to hold the camera there. Clips back in and now we're going to put the top back on the housing. So now we have the whole thing put together. Right here we have power on button, long hold on that button will power the camera on and this is just our shutter release button for video and photographs. So a couple other items to look at. This button here is the on off button when it's long held, but short presses will switch modes. Right now we're in 4K 60 frames per second mode. If I push this once, it'll put us into a slow motion mode. And then one more push, it'll put us into the photo mode so you can take single frame pictures using this as the shutter release button. One more push puts us right back into regular video mode again. So uh, pretty excited. So let me turn it on. And hey, the camera is alive and looking out the window in the correct orientation, you can see as we tilt from side to side, that gimbal keeps up with us. So we're really excited to see some great footage underwater. So during our first dive at Frederickstead Pier, we'd been underwater for about 20 minutes. I was at about 20, 25 feet. And for whatever reason, I reached up to check the ring just to make sure it was still secure. And lo and behold, I could actually turn the ring. It had loosened underwater. So that was concerning to me. I double checked, there was nothing in there. The camera was still functioning fine. So we went about our, the rest of our dive. On the second dive, I put the camera back into the housing, put it together just as we showed you in this video, and we went on our dive. We got down to about 75, 80 feet. And we're probably about 40 minutes into the dive when, when I pushed the on button, the camera wouldn't turn on anymore. 
Then I went to look inside and this is what I saw. Can you see that in there? Yep. Okay. And at the end of the dive, this is what really made me cry. That's not cool. And so here it is, my poor little dad Osmo Pocket 2. Uh, it won't turn on anymore. Uh, we tried drying it out. I'm guessing that the salt water has just dried the internal components. And uh, unfortunately, it's that. I will give it a good burial. But it makes me very sad. I love this camera. So what are some of our thoughts on the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 and the underwater housing that you can use to take it diving? Well, the gimbal itself is just amazing. I just love using this thing both above and well below water until it flooded. Um, but uh, overall, the stability and the type of images you can capture, wow. The video and photography quality, also outstanding. Uh, the ability to switch through those various modes. You can set it at 4K 60 frames per second to record just normal video. You can put it in a slow-mo or the ability to take still frame photos. And the images that I showed you, we didn't do any color correction to those. Those were the actual images captured by the camera. With this, there is white balancing capabilities, but within the housing, you're not able to manually white balance. But again, it captured pretty realistic colors. And uh, with some minor color correction in post-production, I think this would work very well. And also because of its compact size, the small size of the housing, very easily in and out of the water, easy to transport. And then onto the housing itself. This is about a $55 to $60 add-on to the rest of the system, so not a huge expense. But when it's carrying around a camera inside of it that is quite expensive, you wanna make sure that this works properly. So what are some of the pluses? I like the fact that there's different attachment points here, so depending on how you're carrying it, um, it, it is very easy to hold in your hand. The viewing uh, window makes it very easy to tell what you're looking at. And obviously from an operational perspective, there's only two buttons. It makes it really easy. Big round viewing window. But when it comes to a housing, one of its most important, if not the most important job it has is to protect the camera inside of it. If the camera dies, then nothing works properly. So uh, I had some concerns initially because of the fact that this O-ring, there's only one O-ring, and it's not sitting in the threads or within the threads. Um, I'm not an engineer, but for me, this just seemed like as water pressure was applied to this, this is probably the reason that this part was able to loosen and therefore eventually water could ingress past the threads into the housing. We have reached out to DGI. We're gonna show them this video um, and see if uh, did we do something wrong? Is this your user error? Or have they had this experience with other users? Like I said, I love the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 camera, but can I wholeheartedly recommend the underwater housing? At this point, after two dives, flooding it and killing my camera, I can't tell the everything scuba family out there that this is something that you should own. If DJI t tells us otherwise, we will absolutely give you an update in a future episode.